Hi everyone, welcome to this last week as we journey together through the story to the manger with Paula Gooder. And what better place to bring it all together than with the story of Simeon and Anna in Luke's Gospel chapter 2. And as we look at this story this week, it's normally known as the presentation of Jesus in the temple. But as Luke describes it, there's actually three stories that are going on here. The first is to do with Jesus being named. And that would have actually taken place on the eighth day after Jesus' birth. And it was about his both giving, being given a physical name, but also his circumcision. And that was going all the way back into the story of Abraham himself and his relationship with God. So circumcision within the Jewish tradition really is about covenant and covenant relationship, a seal of the relationship between God and his people. And so Jesus is adopting that as part of this journey that he's going to make to be the new Israel for Israel and indeed for the world. The second part of the story which Luke brings in here is to do with Mary's purification. It was an old tradition that a mother would wait for 33 days after the naming of their child, so that would have been around the 40th day, and then they would have gone through this ritual of purification according to the book of Leviticus. And that's where the two doves comes in, or the two pigeons. It was seen as if they couldn't afford a lamb, then they would have brought two doves or two pigeons. And the story picks up that detail, which indicates that Mary and Joseph weren't wealthy people, but they came in faithfulness to this great place called the temple. And Mary would have gone through something which, even back a few generations, it was called being churched, a time of thanksgiving for the birth of the child and the safe arrival of their baby, but also of the fact that as a mother you'd come through this journey of childbirth. Not so popular these days, so you may have never heard of it before. But the last part is the presentation of Jesus in the temple. Now that's an interesting thing because it's got sort of itself two or three parts to it. It was an old tradition in the book of Exodus that the firstborn son to a family belonged to God. Pick it up again with the idea of harvest, that it's the first fruits go back to God, they belong to God. So it was important that you gave your firstborn back to God. And then strangely, the father of the family would then redeem their child by paying five shekels to the priest. What's interesting is this story takes place in the temple. It didn't need to take place there. So Luke is trying to tell us something. And if you remember when we looked at the Magnificat, Luke is harking back to this close relationship he has between Mary and a lady called Hannah, between Jesus and Hannah's child, Samuel. And if you remember your Old Testament, you remember that Hannah also brought her child to the temple and he was going to live through the temple but also bring a message from God to the temple and indeed to the world of reformation and of change. And you may remember those old stories of him listening and hearing God and going to the prophet and priest Eli. The third thing that goes on in this story is if we go back to this idea of Joseph needing to redeem then his son Jesus with five shekels. There's a lovely irony straight parody going on here. In the same way as Joseph paid for his son, so God and Jesus paid ultimately for the redemption of the world. And it was going to cost them a lot more than five shekels. So this presentation takes place in the temple to try and tell us something. But of course they come to this old priest, Simeon. And Simeon had been promised that he would see the Messiah. He would see his salvation, the redemption of Israel and indeed the world. But what I love about this story as it unfolds amongst us is that he actually held the Messiah in his arms. Anyone of you who have ever held a newborn baby 
will know there's something different than just seeing it or him or her. You're actually holding him or her in your arms and knowing that closeness, that breath, that life pulsating within them. And I'm sure it made Simeon full of wonder and full of joy. And so let us walk into wonder and joy with Simeon and indeed with Anna this week as we share this story and the outworking of Jesus's life and indeed death and resurrection amongst us. So I hope you have a really good week. And along with Simeon, we join in that great prayer. Now, Lord, let us thou thy servant depart in peace, knowing that we have seen the face of God. God bless everyone. Have a good week. Hope you enjoy.